Hello everyone, hope you find yourself having a great day. I've got a quick tutorial for you today, uh, more uh, or less a uh, illustration and uh, example of how you can use connectors. They're very simple and easy to use once you know a few of the little secrets. So let's get started. We've got Cinema 4D fired up. We're going to drop into our scene a cylinder. We're going to move that over to its Z plus axis. We're going to fatten this big boy up a little bit. And this is going to represent an axle of some sort. We'll increase our segments on this guy to about 50. And we're going to select that in our object manager. Control click, drag down, create a duplicate. And with this duplicate, we're going to reduce it somewhat. This is going to react as a bearing, in a sense. We're going to fatten that guy up, and we're going to just play with its rotational segment so that it's visible, so that it's kind of chunky in a way. And it has the appearance of a bolt, but this will allow us to see it rotate a little bit better in this example. So get your scene so that it looks something about like that. I'm going to change mine to garage shading with lines, just so I can see everything involved. And then we're going to drop a uh, cube into our scene. This will just give us more to play with in regards to a, a visible surfaces moving in the scene. Okay, so I'm going to move that guy up. Then I want to embed it into this bearing just to some, some degree. Something about like that so that it's hidden. I might take that bearing and rotate it a little bit more just so that it's a little more aligned up with the top of the uh, scene. That's going to be good. All right. Now what we need to do is we need to make everything in this scene editable. We'll begin just do one of these guys, select them all, hit C. All right. And now we need to uh, realign all the center, the entire center of the scene. So what we'll do is enable our axis modification tool and come down here and zero everything out under its position. So the whole center of the scene is all the objects combined. All right. Remember to disable your axis modification tool after we've done that. Okay, we're going to take this element and the bearing portion by control clicking, or you can select them individually up here. And at this point, we're going to right click, choose connect and delete. All right, we've got those guys selected. We need to again readjust our axis of these, and we're going to zero out these positions to zero. So everything will rotate this combined portion along with the bearing portion will rotate at the center uh, of our world. Alright. We're going to take this we'll call it the arm and we'll leave the cylinder named as it is. It'll just make more sense that way. Now while we've got that cylinder selected let's go ahead and zero it out. Okay, disable your axis modification tool. We're going to go under simulate dynamics and we're going to add a connector. Okay, it's now in the scene, it just happens to be invisible. So we're going to scale that guy up just for visual here. Okay, you can see we've got a, a rotational piece and a pivot point. This is just a visual again. It, uh, if you render this out, you see none of it. Okay. So we've got that. And what we need to do at this point is go into our connector, have it selected. And here you'll see object A and object B. One's going to be the stationary portion, and one's going to be the rotational piece. But before we do that, we need to add a little dynamics. Let's take our cylinder. We're going to right click it under simulation tags. We're going to tell it to be a collider body. That means uh, physics, uh, this will allow this to have physical interaction. However, gravity will not affect it. We'll take the arm. I'm going to right click that under simulation tags. <clears throat> We're going to give it a rigid body. All the same as a co uh, collider body, except physical uh, gravity will be allowed to interact with this. Okay? So we both applied both of our dynamics tags. Now what we need to do at this point is we're going to go back into our connector 
or we've got a, a object properties of object A and B. A and B. So we'll put the arm once we've selected our connector into object A. Now this you, you may get wrong sometimes. You may need to switch them around where object A may have needed to bend the cylinder or vice versa. But you have to at least try, have to at least initiate, and then at that point you can check your results. So we're going to increase our timeline up to about uh, 600 frames. And we've got our connector, our arm, and our cylinder. I'm going to move this arm, I'm going to rotate it just a touch so that it's off balance. It's not vertical. And if everything's set up right and I hit play, you'll see that our arm now begins to fall. It's being affected by gravity. And that our cylinder, our pivot point, <clears throat> is not being affected by gravity. So very interesting effect there. You can see where this might come in handy. And if you just watch it, you'll see that uh, the conservation of any energy is even effect here. It will not, it doesn't have enough energy to rotate around 360. It just stops short of it. All right, something else you can do, this entire piece can be animated. If we add a null to our scene, make sure we're rewound, click and drag all the uh, elements here into that null so that you have a down arrow. Let it go. Make sure your null selected. We're back on uh, frame zero. I'm going to put a keyframe there. I'm going to move forward to frame. Actually, I'm going to play this until it just about makes its complete rotation. About right there. I'll go ahead and stop it, put a keyframe, and I'm going to move forward just a little bit. And then we're going to play some trickery. I'm going to, while my null selected, I'm going to take the whole piece, I'm going to move it over just a little bit at a keyframe. This way we're going to be able to force it to make that a uh, rotation. So here we go. See that? See how we moved it? I'll put another keyframe here. Go forward a little bit. And we'll move it. Another keyframe. Now let's get a look and see if we've got our completed cycle here. We didn't have quite enough in that one, but you get the point. So just a quick little um, illustration with the connector. Uh, you can use it for a variety of things in your projects. So I hope this was helpful to you guys and you found it interesting. Remember, if you like my channel, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.